Hey, good morning, everybody. I uh, apologize, it was a while since my last video, but got a little bit of a burnout in the shop. Had other things to do. I uh, want to show you all this. It's a steady rest I made. Three plies of 15 16 plywood. Two of them are glued, sandwiched and glued together. Actually, these back two are the front one. I just secure with screws in case I need to take one of these out for some reason. What this blue bar is, is uh, I think it's Craig brand T-bar. It takes quarter inch nut or quarter inch bolt, excuse me, slides in the track. Just feed, put it in there, feed it through the hole. These are through hole knobs, five star knobs, so they're nice and comfortable. It slides in and out for adjustment. The wheels I use, these are sliding glass door rollers, ball bearing. I got them at the local hardware store, like $4 a piece. I use a nylon lock nut on them. I don't use the washer on either side because the inner race stands proud of the outer race right now I'm using black Buna in o-rings I need to get some silicone so they don't mark up the wood uh, the base is three-quarter inch ply plus a 15 16 inch ply and you can see I believe in getting stuff secured together the rail or a piece of wood to fit between the rails of my jet lathe. This right here, let me try to find it, the viewfinder. This right here is the bottom piece. Um, got a T-nut recessed in the bottom, 3 8 inch bolt. I don't remember how long the bolt was. It was a little long, so I had to cut it off. But one tip, if you're cutting a bolt off, put you a nut on first cut it off then smooth up the burrs either on a grinder or with a file that way when you're done you can unscrew your nut get it up to where the threads were cut and smoothed and use your nut to smooth out the threads that way when you go back with your knob I'm sorry if this is out of focus because the camera doesn't have autofocus but your knob goes on, goes through the hole in here, the knob clamps on top. It's a pretty good little uh, steady rest. I think the bar was $14 and the knobs were $1.50 at Woodcraft. I mean, I've got less than $30 tied up in this. It's not hard to make, basically what I did is I made a cardboard template. Let me check the focus, make sure you can see this. I made a cardboard template to cut to mark and cut everything out. If I do something like this, I always use a cardboard template. That way I can fold it up and have it if I need it again later. Anyway, enough of the steady rest. Let me get this out of the way. Okay. Today I'm going to show you some different tools. I'm going to show you uh, one thing is how to sharpen carbide shear scrapers. I don't know if you can see that. Carbide shear scrapers. They tell you to rotate it a quarter of a turn when it gets dull and buy you a new one. It's 16 to $20 if you keep buying new ones. You're spending a lot of money. I'll show you how to resharpen those. What this is mounted to is key stock I got key stock at the local hardware store put it in my four jaw chuck turned it down to fit in the large 3 8 inch tool shaft that's a quarter inch hole got two set screws and what I've done is I filed a small flat on top so when the set screws grab this won't turn that works perfectly this is basically what it looks like with that one mounted on it 
and I shape the bottom just so it doesn't catch. I shape the bottom after I put the bit on the, the cutter and the screw in. That way I can get the screw bottom of the screw ground down to. Uh, this is my other carbide scraper. I don't know if you can see it. It's got a little bit of build up on top of it. It's got some junk on it. But I'm going to sharpen the top and the bevel with a cheap $1.99 diamond wheel. Now I've got some other tools over here that I've made. I don't know if I'll be able to get to them today or not. Um, no, on the, the tool shafts, I, I'm not doing a video on how to make those. Chuck them up in your uh, pin jaws. Um, I use centering drills to start the hole. Whatever size bit you're going to use, just drill it to the depth. I, I usually drill about an inch. This one is deeper because I use a double-ended eighth inch bit. And that one, and whenever I put these bits in, especially on the small tools, make sure I'm staying in focus here. On the small tools, I don't leave a lot hanging out. Get the bevel oriented with the screws. I can see that that's, they're beveled down on both ends. One end has a fingernail profile grind. The other end has a bowl profile grind. I use on my jet slow speed wet grinder with Tormek turning tool jigs. But whenever you put your bits in to these tool shafts, especially these eight these little ones that for the eighth inch tools that use 348 set screws, don't crank down on them. There, there's no need to crank and crank and crank on the set screw to lock it down. What I'll do is I'll put it in until it stops. I'll bump it three times. Oop. If the Allen wrench will stay in there, there we go. Bump it three times. These things are small and my eyes are bad. Get in there, bump it three times. When it stops, bump it three times. That way you don't strip them out. I do the same thing with the screws in the shaft. Oh, the black on here. Yeah, I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, about a week ago, I got a can of that Flex Seal because I I've got a custom 1370 cross from 1377 air pistol that I made a grip and pump grip for, and then wanted more grip. So I got some Flex Seal to spray them, and I liked the way it felt. So I thought, well, let me put it on my turning tools and see how it works. It gives you a good uh, slip resistant surface. A little, little bit tacky. I mean, it's not so tacky that you can't let go of it, but it gives you a good grip. I uh, know where was I before all that. Oh, extended tool bits that slide in and out of the shaft. Let me just make sure I'm in the picture. They slide in and out of the shaft, set screws holding. Again, like the eighth inch, there's a fingernail profile grind and a bowl profile grind. And the top, I do it on the bench grinder. And it the bevel, I don't know how well this will show the bevel. The bevel I use this jig for, you can see I've started one already on the quarter inch tool. What this is, don't go out and buy you a 30 or $40 tool, don't buy uh, an expensive or an expensive three foot piece of drill rod that you're going to have to harden. Get a six or twelve inch extra length drill bit. This is three sixteenths. This is quarter inch. I made the eighth inch bits out of six inch. Cut it off with uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Oh. Reinforced cutoff wheel on a rotary tool. You got two tools in one, and that bit cost five dollars. Which I've got three sixteenths quarter inch. I've got two different styles of uh, 
cutting angles on them. Uh, when I sharpen this, this is quarter inch brass rod. I've drilled and tapped 440 for this uh, flathead screw. You have to have the screw go past the, the face of the cutter so you can sharpen it. That's uh, real simple to do. If you don't have a collet chuck, you can put it in your pin jaws. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to swing this, move this camera over, pardon the bumpiness, but I'm going to get it set up, put on the lathe so I can show you how to sharpen this, save yourself a ton of money on carbide bits. So bear with me here for just a minute. Thing near perfect. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on this. Make sure I get it in focus. Okay, let me get my collet up. This I'm gonna be sharpening at about 1100 RPM. Make sure. I get it adjusted so you can see what I'm doing over there I apologize guys it's kind of hard to do this one man filming and doing the work a little bit of focus okay there we go that should be good right there the bits mounted in the brass rod, flathead screws down tight, it's in the collet chuck tight. Take your diamond wheel, like I said this $1.99 diamond coated wheel, uh, cut off wheel, got it at a local discount to a place. It, it wasn't hard afraid of Steve's home sale, these are $1.99. Um, always wear your safety glasses, especially when doing this. And here's the disclaimer. Anytime you're going to sharpen bits, grind, shape, or cut bits, I assume no responsibility. Y'all do it at your own risk. Just be smart and use precaution when you're doing it. Always wear safety glasses. When you're sharpening these, you really want to pay attention to what you're doing because if you slip, <clears throat> as you're sharpening, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to lay your thumb or your finger wide open. What I do is just hold that onto the face. Work it back and forth. Again, it's a carbide cutter. Be careful if you slip. You're probably going to be going to get stitches. Either that or man up and just put super glue on it. Close up the cut. Face is getting pretty good. These are, I guess, what you call a medium grit. They don't make them in fine. Just keep working the face. Until you get down to a, to a clean, smooth finish. Then on the back side, coming on the bevel. Again, be careful. Angle it a little bit. Just eyeball it. Match it up to the bevel. and start working the bevel. Diamond is the only thing that's going to cut a carbide cutter very well. Because tungsten carbide is second only to diamonds in hardness. Run over the edge a little bit.
you can see your smooth spot kind of adjust your hold see what I mean adjust your hold to where you're putting the shine on the entire bevel come back to the front a little bit that little bee's about to get on my nerves that's flying around here my shop is inundated with wasps too go back to your bevel a little bit go back to the face back to the bevel a little bit turn your lathe off you can feel the sharpness and if it'll pull a curl off your fingernail like that it's sharp be very careful they're extremely sharp I want to show you one thing I don't know if I still got it or not I may have thrown it away This kind of diamond die sharp. Got it at Woodcraft. First time I tried it, carbide ate every bit of diamond off of it. These cheap wheels, I've used this one about four or five times. It's still got good grit on it. But that's a few things I wanted to show you this morning. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. My wife doesn't want me doing long videos because it takes forever to upload. And she likes to play World of Warcraft and it slows her down. So I'm going to go ahead and end this here. Uh, I'll pick it up with shaping some of those drill bits into uh, detail uh, cutters. Uh, you know, both with the fingernail and the bowl shape and I'll show you how they work. I appreciate y'all watching. Again, I'm sorry it's been a while, but I'll get some more videos done soon.